Okay, whenever you're ready. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Zeph from Anonix Or. And uh, before I get started, how awesome are these uh, toy matrix badges for CypherCon? Uh, a lot of work goes into these. Uh, I was thinking into it today, into the terminal. The fact that they have a MUD with a computer inside there and then uh, programming language is just amazing. Uh, so I'm going to talk about tonight uh, how I went from zero to vendor in 12 months. I knew nothing about hardware, nothing about embedded. Uh, I only love badges, and so I decided to make one for myself. Uh, I run the Anodics or Twitter account. Uh, I also go under the name Zap, uh, so that's my Twitter handle there at the bottom. Uh, so let's get started. If I can change slides, maybe no. There we go. So just before we get started, this has nothing to do with my employer. So if anyone hears from my work, this has nothing to do with you. Uh, these are all my own views. Uh, so what is Anodic Sword? We get this question a lot. Uh, it's really nothing. Uh, it started out as three of us, computer science, double E, math majors. Uh, we started off at DEF CON 18, uh, created the account of walking through the halls of DEF CON 20. Uh, and the purpose was, let's go troll DEF CON. Uh, so there were all these parties at DEF CON 20. Ninjas had their party. There was an LOL Bitcoin party, I believe. And everyone was just going crazy over these things. We're like, well, let's go make a fake party and then get people to chase us around for it. So we did that, posted some fake tweets. We got people to chase over uh, us over to HHB. Uh, had some fun. Uh, so if anyone was trolled by that, I apologize. But that's how we started. Uh, the correct pronunciation is and not XOR. That's another question we get a lot. It just kind of created on the whim, so I apologize. Uh, we are up to five members now. Uh, we know each other from high school and college. Uh, so we have Jorge, uh, we have Andrew, myself, Zap, and the two new members are Hiram and Bitstreet. So what do we do? Other than trolling uh, DEF CON, we like to make stuff. So uh, DEF CON 21, we had our ninja phones. We got them 20. Uh, we were able to social our, our way into getting those phones. And we made a, a, a Bluetooth breathalyzer. And that was nothing more than an app. You dial pound pound beer on the phone and you get uh, a breathalyzer, you blow into it, and if you had, didn't have anything to drink that night, you would show milk uh, traffic. If you had a couple <laughs> drinks, it would show Heineken. If you had a whole bunch, it was uh, maybe vodka or 151 was the highest you could score. We never registered that on anybody, sadly. Uh, <laughs> DEF CON 22, we didn't do any projects. Uh, not all of us could make that DEF CON. It was unfortunate. Uh, came back at DEF CON 23, and we made a, a hackable Wi-Fi backpack. So this was a Raspberry Pi with a battery pack running 64-bit uh, web, and it was hack me for beer. Uh, turns out no one wants to hack that. They think it's a honey pot. We had beer, <laughs> and we could hack us. So uh, we, we did get social engineered for one. Uh, they bugged us about it, so here's a beer. So that was, uh, that was kind of disappointing. Uh, the tweet there on the right, uh, if you go way back in our Twitter timeline, that's about where it starts. We did leave all the trolling stuff. Uh, but that was a, a screenshot of the web page you got when you logged into the backpack. And there's a, a simple login page, and if you reverse engineer it, you get a rolling code that lined up with our Pebble Watch. Um, so if you gave us that code, you had a No one did it. Uh, DEF CON 24 is where the group really took off. Uh, I think we had 100 Twitter followers at 23, and by 24, we were over 1,000. Uh, it just it grew exponentially. Uh, and then for 25, we're actually coming up with it. Vendor 2.0. I'm going to show you a demo here at the end of that, uh, what I've got so far. Uh, one thing we do do is we do drink beer, we prefer craft beer, and we homebrew. And we prefer to do it while we make stuff. So it's usually a combination of the two, good decisions or bad. Uh, we just kind of end up with what we end up with. Oops, all the way back to the end. Sorry about that. It's only 194 slides. <laughs> uh, there we go. So who am I? Uh, other than calling myself Zap, uh, I've been coding my whole life. Uh, I learned basic at 8, uh, taught myself C at 10, uh, and that wasn't, I'm not some super C programmer, but uh, it was basically from uh, hello world, those types of things. Uh, but this is what I've been doing, this is what I enjoy. 
Uh, my bachelor's is, of course, in computer science. Uh, I got a master's in 2010 in systems engineering. Uh, most of my professional career has been spent middle tier, doing SOAP web services, Java, Oracle, PHP, SQL, XML, XSLT. Uh, it's not my fault, that's what we did. Uh, that was those were the technologies of the time. It was um, painful because you're worrying about how many gigabytes of RAM do I get in my Java virtual machine so it doesn't crash. And now I'm worried about how many kilobytes of RAM do I have left in my, in my microcontroller. So it's a vastly different world. Uh, Five years ago, uh, I was promoted to engineering management, so now I go to work, I go to meetings, I use office, and I travel. That's that's my life. So I balance it out with, with doing these kind of projects. So at work, it's political. Uh, it's interesting. I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. But at home, I get to go and get my hands dirty and twiddle bits and those sorts of things. Uh, until I, the DEF CON 24 badge, hardware was always magic. It just kind of worked. I didn't understand why. Uh, I didn't pay a lot of attention to my double E classes in college because I liked the coding more, but I got through, I passed, I graduated, whatever. Uh, so that's me. Uh, I'm also obsessed with electronic badges. Obsessed. Um, so that's why I made my own, and I'll get to that in a second. My first experience uh, was at DEF CON 18. I was actually late showing up to, the, to uh, DEF CON that year. I got lucky because they had a second wave of badges. I didn't know how lucky I was. A lot of people had paper badges, but I got one. Uh, really enjoyed it. One of the one of the things about the uh, the badge was it's single layer aluminum and it's nice e paper display. Joe Grand did this design. I still have it in my workbench. I need to fix it though. But that was kind of the kind of where things got started. For me. DEF CON 20, I mentioned the Ninja badge, so we were able to social our way into getting a couple of these. It wasn't really a badge, it was a phone, but they had these custom HTC One V phones with their own kind of scan on top of Android. Uh, when we hacked it to add in things like Rickroll and all sorts of other fun things, uh, Flappy Bird and whatever, it was all done through the dialer. So you just dial up whatever app you wanted, you dial the launcher, we didn't want to touch any of this, so it looked stock out of the front, just like we got it the first day. Uh, Jorge, who I meant to introduce in the beginning, he did the Crypto and Privacy Bill of Badge 23. When I saw him do this, I was like, if he can do it, maybe I can do this too. Uh, these things sold like hotcakes. I helped sell them, helped do some of the debugging, some of the uh, handing, uh, handing out the badges to folks. So this this was uh, one of the things that really inspired me. The same DEF CON, there's a DEF CON shoe badge. I'm not really into guns. But it was a badge, so I bought it, and he was selling it. DEF CON 503, these are just a group out of Portland. Uh, Joe Fitz made this one, also went home with that one from DEF CON 23. Uh, they had those LEDs on the back side, just like your CyberCon badge does. Layer 1, so this was actually where we brought one of our prototype vendors last year, but the Layer 1 badge, another nice one in my collection. This was a PSOC 4 or 5 with uh, 20 different LEDs like we have on our QueerCon. So I don't think any of you saw this last year at DEF CON, but these were amazing. I traded two vendors to get one. Uh, the traces on are just amazing. The LEDs look amazing. They have uh, 2.4 gigahertz RF. Uh, the QueerCon guys do a really good job on their, on their badges. Uh, not quite as obsessed as Corgo. Uh, this is a picture of him from his own Twitter account uh, right around DEF CON. Uh, he's got everything on there. I don't know how he got it all. If any of you were looking for vendors and you couldn't find one, it's his fault. He's got three. <laughs> uh, he's got a prototype vendor, and that's my fault I traded that to him. He's got one of the black vendors and one of the white vendors. So if you want one, he's got three, just so you know. Okay, so I love badges. How hard can they really be? I wanted to make my own. So the thing is, come up, come up with a great idea. Let's create a design. Of course, we need to put vendor. Just go make a whole bunch, and then we'll profit, right? How hard? It's not that bad. Problem is, this is everything I knew about hardware on one slide. <laughs> Seriously, I didn't know how to solder. I didn't know one thing about embedded microcontroller, but debuggers, anything. And that was at DEF CON 23. So how I got there in 194 steps. 
<laughs> Step one, learn the basics. So a week after DEF CON, went home, got on Amazon, Amazon Prime, get the uh, the Arduino, little starter kit you can get, it has all the, the LEDs and the buttons and everything like that. You know, soon I was you know, going through all the different projects, I had 15, 15 different projects in there, and you know, displaying the, the temperature. And it was great. How hard could this be? Uh, eventually, I migrated off to getting some 555 timers off of eBay, drew together one of those circuits, had the LEDs blinking, my wife thought I was crazy, uh, but it was cool. The next step uh, was to learn to solder. So if I was going to make a badge, I needed to do something that was surface map. Uh, so here is kind of the, the pinnacle of where I was trying to get to. I actually soldered on one of our 48-pin T250 chips onto a breakout board, put that on a breadboard, dropped in all the capacitors and crystal, and actually was able to code it. This particular picture, there is an issue with it. If you've, if you've done any of this type of uh, work, there is no crystal. Uh, I spent two days trying to figure out why I couldn't flash this thing, because there was no crystal. Detailed, right? <laughs> Once I kind of got that nailed down, I kind of understood how to solder. I created a project for myself. We got Bender was still too far, too far away. It, it wasn't something I could accomplish yet. So I decided, why don't I make a, a Christmas ornament for some family, uh, friends, and coworkers? Uh, so I came up with this. It's kind of a, a bell, and it had LEDs around the ring. It played some Christmas music. Really simple. Sent the design out to China. Waited, you know, four weeks for it to show up, and it actually worked. Uh, so friends enjoyed it, and that was kind of my, my one of my first designs. Also, up here I have the 555 timer I took off the breadboard and thrown to a PCB just to see it. And can I do this? All my footprints are wrong. Sorry. Okay, so step four, uh, brainstorm. So this is where the group we kind of get together and said, well, what, what should we make this do? Hackers like bling, so let's put a lot of bling on it. And more bling and more bling and more bling. Uh, it's got to be hackable. Uh, we decided to go with Arduino for this guy. Uh, so that folks could plug it in and make sure that it was... Or so they could plug it in and program and do whatever they wanted. We had a couple folks do that. We had somebody out of Spectrum Analyzer at one point. We wanted the badge to, uh, to talk to other badges. We wanted to chat. We wanted to be able to troll each other. We wanted to do all these interesting things. Uh, we wanted Easter eggs. The best badges, like the Cybercon ones, they have all sorts of Easter eggs buried within. And not everyone will find it, and there may be Easter eggs that will, will never be found. Um, so that's some of the stuff we wanted to do. We wanted to have games, and we love Bender, and no one was really doing any Futurama themes, so that's what we, we put in there. We had some uh, kind of outlandish ideas. We thought about, let's do password cracking, let's do spectrum analyzer, only make it a breathalyzer. Uh, FPGA, because why not put an FPGA? Who knows what for? Let's just throw one on there. Um, and then TV be gone. So we kind of threw those ideas out. We kind of went through and said, well, what parts would this require? And then how realistic or what's the cost to do that? Step five was to take those ideas and start to prototype them. So this was really just gathering a bunch of different parts, uh, coming up with the different drivers and figuring out, well, can we actually do this? Can we, you know, does this particular Nokia display as you see in the top right, can we animate this thing fast enough? How does it look when we when we show some sort of like you know, falling matrix display on it? it? Turns out it doesn't look good at all. We we threw that one away. Um, we ended up switching to this OLED display you see at the bottom, created some specialized breakout boards so we can test the radio, we can test the LEDs, we can do those types of things. Threw it on a breadboard, uh, and you, as you notice our design's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So threw it on a breadboard. And uh, tested out sort of writing some of our code. This was about Christmas time uh, last year that we did this. And of course, we failed. So, uh, still not very good at soldering. Uh, I'm, I'm better now than I was, but the issues with the shorting on these radios. So, it's like, well, if they're going to short while they're underneath the, the, the sock, we want to just raise the sock off the chip or off the uh, PCB. All, you know, it's all good. So, that's how I fixed it. Uh, when we did the actual badges, we did surface mount them. It was much cleaner. So step seven is set up the bomb. Uh, so this was 
you know, going through all the, the prototyping and, and figuring out down to the nth degree, every single part we're going to put on the badge. Everything from we're going to need four of these resistors, and there's 125 badges. How many do we need to buy? Who sells it? At what cost? Etc. And we could we could know within you know just a few pennies whether or not something would save us money or not. And, and the spreadsheet was was really a lifesaver throughout the process. So the spreadsheet behind us is how we mapped all the pins and made sure we didn't have any resource contention between everything. This is how I like to manage projects, so we'll apply it here. So once we kind of had our, our bomb set up and we, we knew what we wanted, we put all in one all in one place. So I, I took a just a simple board, solder everything together, put some alligator clips on it, board around my neck, board around the house. My wife was really excited about that one. She didn't have any idea what I was doing. Uh, but everything was in one spot, and I use this to do a lot of coding of the of sleep and a lot of the LED animations, etc. This is just kind of proving that, yeah, all these components work together at the same time. So the next thing was, okay, take all that off the breadboard, put it into a PCB. Uh, we decided to do four layer, because why not do four layer? We're doing some RF. Uh, so we got the display, we got you know, our, our five buttons, we got our eight LEDs. Almost everything's represented what we wanted. This is where we add in the, uh, the NAND flash and USB. We didn't have that before. So th that, was, that was our first real prototype. Problem here, there was a lot of fails here too. Uh, so the USB was backwards. The display, we, we mixed some pins on the display. Our crystal uh, footprint was wrong. Our diode footprints were wrong. Uh, our SMA port did not fit the, the SMA adaption we had. And that five-way button that was really nice and saved a lot of space was terrible. Couldn't use it. I had big thumbs. I couldn't use it. The the little black pieces actually came off and broke. I had to replace it on several of the prototypes. So it was a, a really good uh, learning experience here when you iterated upon that. So the next thing I did is I threw that all away and came up with a new schematic. This is the schematic you'll see on our GitHub if you were to go and pull it. This is actually the final design. We did start from scratch, make sure everything is the way we want it, make sure all the components are in there the way we want it. Step 12 was to actually spin that into a PCB. So this was our very first, called it Fender 1. Uh, it was white and black, just like the, the regular human vendors were at that time. Uh, you also notice it looks very different than... Uh, than the vendor you, you saw at DEF CON. So the display was down at the bottom. It has a through hole uh, crystal. And the primary way of programming was over serial, which was really painful. And it also had a lot of fails. Um, so we realized that there's an internal pull up on the reset button and or on the reset pin. And so when we removed the external pull up that we had on it, we were basically just shorting it to ground. So if you press the button, it, sh it shorted the badge and reset the badge. Problem was we couldn't get into the view mode because of that. So <laughs> that was an issue. USB was also screwed up still. We were missing some sort of uh, resistor on there. Why would you ever put a display covering the mouth of the vendor? I don't know. That was just a bad decision. <laughs> That's like his signature part of, of, his, uh, of his look. So once you kind of figured out what we had with vendor one, Next up was to buy parts, uh, and a lot of parts. Every day, I'd come home from work and there'd be some box in China. I'm probably on some watch list now because <laughs> of the number of uh, shipments I've received. Uh, the top left, those are all the displays that came. I was really concerned about those because they, uh, China tends to sell those in four different variants, and I wanted to make sure I got the exact same pin out. I didn't really care about the color. I cared that the pin order was the same. And they're all over the map of which ones they sell. Turns out they're all the same. That was good. Only a couple were failed. I uh, bought a whole bunch of NAND flash and then uh, a bunch of DigiKey and uh, orders as well. And even more parts. Uh, radios. We have the uh, bunch of batteries. I think we bought 800 batteries for this project. Uh, as well as a bunch of antennas and then boxes and boxes of LEDs and various other components. Now we have the parts, and we understood what we, what we learned with vendor one. Uh, step 15 is to really go back and, and come up with a new prototype. So this was you know, fixing that reset button, moving the display, those types of things. 
So here's Bender 2. If you find Corgo, he's got one of these. If you want to see in person, I did bring one with me. Uh, it actually works. We were able to flash over USB if you run a resistor to one of the I.O. ports. Uh, I actually wore it at layer 1. It was great. But it also had some fails. Sorry, I'll get back. We did do Hypnotote on that one. It was awesome on there. So all hail Hypnotote. Uh, so some fails here. So USB, as I mentioned, it did not. It was not recognized as a high-speed device by uh, Linux or Windows. This was missing that resistor. The other thing I learned is this phenomenon called ground bounce. And as a computer science guy, this is a completely foreign concept to me. Uh, so behind the display, that's where we put the voltage regulator. It's a switching regulator. We had some massive current loops. And when you have massive current loops in a voltage regulator or switching regulator, you get alternating current on those loops. And that creates a massive electro electromagnetic field. On the back side of the display is the radio. So we're sending RF, or we're sending electromagnetic energy through our radio. That didn't exactly work very well for our transmitter receipt. Uh, so the way we fix that is in the, the final design, we move it down. So there's your, big, there's your physics for the problem. Step 17 is to uh, finalize the finalize the PCBs. What we did here is fix the issues with Bender 2, uh, order just a few from China, make sure they work the way they, they should, or we put in the big order for the 300, I think, PCBs, that are quite the right ones. Those are the red ones. They work just fine. Went in place and the rest they order for the black and the white PCBs. Seventeen is production. Uh, how hard can it be? You just <laughs> do this 175 times, right? So you take your stencil, you put down your, your solder paste, put it into an oven, which I have here, I have a reflow controller, and then your your board comes out like magic, and perfect. And I love this picture. I every time I stop at the slide when I was reviewing this, I would just stop and stare. For some reason, it just looks so so nice. Uh, but that's that's the basic production step. So that's the first, the first bender that came out. Uh, and that's actually the one I'm flashing it here with the uh, with all the graphics. We had a really bad uh, way to flash the graphics onto the NAND flash. It was basically a serial inter a serial protocol. You send one byte, the badge responds with okay. You send another byte, okay. You don't know if the badge actually got the right byte. It just got a byte. And uh, but that's all we could come up with by the time we had before DEF CON. And it worked to get all the badges flashed for the most part. So steps 19 to 193 is repeat that 174 more times. Uh, so I spent most of uh, the first two weeks of July before we had our big solder party with the whole group just coming up with those, those PCBs at the top. And I was just two layers just doing the reflow. I did maybe 150 of those in those two weeks. Uh, kids go to bed, I go in the garage, I just solder. Uh, and then we had our solder party over, over a weekend, beer, solder, uh, what could go wrong, and we came up with the, the final badges. Uh, and that was before debugging. So after our solder party, I was in the garage debugging and fixing badges. Uh, yeah, it was fantastic. And we had a lot of failures. So the, the number one biggest failure was solder bridges. And this affected our spy bus, our LEDs. We had shorts. Uh, the MCU at the top right that you see there, those are obvious. You can see those with the naked eye. You don't have to put them under, under a microscope. You can fix them right there. And that's that's usually, when they came out of the oven, that's that's usually how they look if there's an issue. Uh, the badges that had a problem, they'd go all the way through flashing. And then we'd start to test them. And you'd get some weird behavior. It would be, you know, you get some sort of screen corruption or the radio wouldn't work. And you go look under a microscope, you get these, uh, you get these types of, solder bridges here. The one on the right, not so bad. You can see that the microscope. The one on the left, you have to have it just in the right light to see if there's a bridge there. So some of the design issues, and if I had to go back and do it again, which I wouldn't actually, I don't plan to do Bender 1 ever again, but if I had to, uh, putting three items, three devices on the same spy bus is very hard. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. 
especially when you're, you're, you have a radio that's always receiving, you're sending packets, you have a display that you're animating, and you have a NAND flash you need to get data off of to put on the display. So I was having all sorts of resource, resource contention issues, I like semaphores, uh, it was just a, a royal pain. The other problem we had was drop packets. I couldn't pull packets off the, the buffer fast enough. You know, the next time I came back around after uh, after some sort of screen draw or whatever. So we just drop packets. So that's why sometimes chat didn't work, those types of things. We had corrupted memory. Anytime we wrote to Flash, if the display had to do something, some of you would sometimes corrupt by this. It was just a, a royal pain. Uh, RF traces are very, very hard. Uh, just don't do it. If you're a first timer like me, don't even think about it. I did it. It was not a good idea. Uh, most of our badges couldn't transmit. Uh, we're not really sure why there was a, a 90 degree return on the RF trace that may have accounted for a lot of it. I haven't really gotten back to, to the bug it much. Uh, they all could receive from a very short range. We did tests uh, during development. We could go about 300 yards at the con as being 30 feet. Uh, so largely, we had a, a plan for mass brick rolling that was not successful. I did make a special device that's battery powered that would just send the brick roll command every second. So we'd walk by groups of vendors and then just watch all their badges go into the brick roll mode. And then when they quit, it would say brick roll by the NSA. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked well enough for that, but it wasn't what we had originally planned. So the DEF CON 25 badge. Our original plan for CypherCon was, hey, this will be right in the middle of our Kickstarter campaign. If everything goes as scheduled, why don't we use CypherCon and then just kind of give it a kick? Uh, that's no longer the plan. It sold out in 12 hours. It completely blew us away. Completely. We had no idea. We thought we'd be lucky to sell 60, let alone 112 hours. So just ignore that. So this is the badge. So you've probably seen this on Twitter. We've talked about Regato. The, the, Sysmon chip is the Regato BMD uh, 300. This is a Nordic NRF52 ARM Cortex M4F uh, chip. We were using an STM32, which was an M3 last year. This year, 512K of flash, 64K of RAM, so I can do a whole lot more with that than I did last year. Uh, we are using VLD 4.2, and we have an integrated antenna, so I don't have to deal with RF traces anymore. Regato did that for me. And a, an interesting story here. Uh, I just cold called or cold emailed their their support desk and said, hey, can I get some samples? And within a couple hours, I get an email back from the CEO saying, hey, I'm in China. Uh, let's hook this guy up. He copies his whole staff. <laughs> he sent me uh, 10, 10, sister, 10 socks and then said, oh, by the way, I'm a black badge holder from Def Con. And so is the co-founder. So they hooked us up with a uh, really good price on, on all these on all these socks. So that's what we're using this year. It's kind of uh, fortuitous that they're from DEF CON as well. Uh, we're using 128 by 128 uh, 1.4 inch color LCD. So that's double the pixels we had last year. Uh, at the time I came up with these slides, we're pushing about 19 and a half frames per second. As of this week, I'm up to 23. So definitely faster. And that's over an 8 megahertz spy bus. That's probably the, the part I'm most proud of right now. Uh, that's if you do the math on that at 16 bit color, the bus is saturated 75 percent of the time. That's handy. Uh, and I've heard that if you can get about 50 percent, you're doing well. So I'm pretty proud of the driver I'm using here. It's all DMA. Uh, we've upped the number of uh, bling, uh, the number of LEDs 87 percent, so even more bling. Uh, we're bringing in the tilt and the ambient light sensors from last year. Uh, turns out a lot of people really like the tilt feature of the badge. You can use it upside down. It makes sense since that's the way to wear it. Uh, the PCB is twice the size. Turns out that also means it's four times the cost. Uh, so that, that'll be interesting. Uh, we've also, our battery life will be about 30% better. We're, the measurements we have is we're about 30% down on the power consumption than what we were. We're about where we were in our best case last year. Uh, before I revert some changes due to stability issues, uh, but so far everything's doing very well. Uh, we're also doubling the quantity, more than doubling the quantity this year, so there'll be more than twice as many on hand at DEF CON after the Kickstarter, so hopefully people who want it can get it. The design, uh, you've probably seen this, this is, our, this is our avatar. So it's a mix of Hunter S. Thompson, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and of course Bender. 
And we went through a lot of different options, everything from Transformers to Pikachu, because Pokemon Go was so popular. I'm not really a big fan of the game, but whatever. Um, we had a bunch of designs and said, well, why would we leave? Why would we not do Bender? That's what everyone says, Bender Badge. So we, we threw Bender in there with this uh, Fear and Loathing uh, design. And then here's a picture. So you guys are actually the first ones to see the red Bender. That's our, we call that one Man Bear Pig 3. Man Bear Pig is a good phrase for the project. That way, anything leaked out before we're ready to say, it was just a, just a phrase. So Man Bear Pig 2 is on the right, Man Bear Pig 3 is on the left. Uh, I actually had that one back in my hotel room. That fixes a lot of the hardware issues we had, some of the fails we had on, on the Revision 2 badge. And you can see just how much bigger it is versus last year's. So some of the main features, I'm not going to give away everything, uh, but we're, we have a lot of bling. Uh, if you go through all the combinations of bling we have in there right now, it's over four or 500 different modes or possibilities. Uh, we hope to have just 100 just out of the box, but you'll be able to do some interesting things with it. Uh, we are going to have an interactive batch batch game. I'm a little bit behind on coding that right now, uh, but we have some big plans there. We ported Flappy and Ski Free from last year already, and they're in color. Uh, the critique I got on Ski Free was, hey, there's no there's no snowman at the end. So I think we're going to probably put a man bear pig in the end, just to keep it the theme. Uh, it's just time, right? Uh, if you've never heard of Chip 8 or Super Chip 8, this is usually a, a beginner type of thing for emulator development. Never done emulators, and this whole project for me is about learning. So we have a Chip 8 and Super Chip 8 emulator. We have two of the six games, that's 64. Uh, already in there, they're running quite nicely. Next. Uh, so we have a term, you're, uh, you're going to hear this, you're probably bring your own bling. Uh, the idea is we want you to be able to add your own bling modes to the, to the badge and not, you know, go spend two days in your hotel room or in Harbor Hack and you're sitting doing this. We want you to do it within a couple hours from your laptop. So bring your favorite GIFs, make sure they're square, this is screen square. Uh, we'll provide instructions and you'll be, need very few tools to get this done. We want to see what you can come up with. Uh, we're also considering some add-ons. We'll probably publish some, some physical specs or something so you can use some 3D printing. We've had some, most, uh, some folks ask for that. And some other big features we can't reveal yet, but we will. Really so how about the cat? Yeah. So let's see if this works. So one of the things, one of the biggest requests, I don't know if you can see it, okay, was a switch. We turned it on last year with by adding, by removing or putting it with the battery. So we've added that, real simple. Same three batteries before. We do have some sponsors, so it's, they'll make things possible. So this is our UI, some more type of, of model we saw last year, just now we get to play with color. Is it reversed? Yeah. No, it's so wrong. Let's see if I can see the demo gods do it. How's that? Yeah, now can you read for me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so bling. So, this is one new mode deal from last year. That's better. Yeah, badger, 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 badger. My kids like that one. So, flames. If you, it doesn't show up on the camera, if you look down at me, you can probably see the LEDs going. Uh, and that's it. This is running the 19 frames per second. Version. The other one is up to 23. So there's the dancing crow, yeah. or dance protest. Hypno toad. You guys see this one in person. It's, 
So those are the those are the built-in modes. Uh, we're not showing you bring your own bling yet. We don't want to reveal all of the way that it works yet. Uh, some of the games. Do you think you played such a game? Probably not. So game over. Very <laughs> <laughs> hard. Yeah, you can't see it. You'll just, you'll just see it down here first. Uh, Ski Green. Actually, I'll show you some chip games. This is one called Ants. It's a little platform game. That's wrong. Really cool. So this is, the Chip 8 was a, I think it was a sharp system, it's from the 70s. But it's kind of got an interesting following on the internet. People have ported it to the HP calculators, all sorts of things, and we put it on a badge. It's pretty fun. It was a fun learning experience. And then we have some other settings as well. So that's all I'm allowed to reveal today. Uh, we have others that I purpose, purposely removed from the code. But, uh, afterwards, if I have some time, you're welcome to come down. I'm going to try. Don't walk away with it. <laughs> uh, only 50 more slides, I promise. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. Um, some things I've learned. Uh, soldering's not hard. Uh, like I said, hardware seemed magical. Soldering also did seem really hard. Uh, it's really not. It's, it just takes a little bit of practice. It takes a steady hand. Uh, drivers are not too hard either. Last year, I didn't I didn't write any of my drivers. I, well, I did write one at the end. Once I was kind of confident in myself, I wrote the flash driver. This year, I've written all my drivers. Uh, so it's, that's been a fun experience. I'm really, again, I'm really proud of the display driver on this next year's badge because that's where I spent all my time. There's a, I put a Hackaday post up on Hackaday.io that kind of explains, you know, the way I was able to optimize it with DMA. So that's been a lot of fun. Uh, one thing, if you're thinking about making a badge or any sort of project like this, think about your, your end user. In our case, it's the drunk DEF CON hacker. Design for them. Make it reliable. Make sure you, you plan battery life so that uh, if they leave it on at night or forget to flip the switch or forget to take out the battery, it'll still work on Sunday. Um, they're not going to be able to plug in the USB very well. So you know, think of your end user. Uh, one thing that we weren't as good last year, but we're working on this year, plan for failure. So prototype many times. We just got our, uh, my wife just sent me a picture, we just got our fourth revision of the PCBs. So iterate through your design, have plenty of time your schedule for that. Uh, add flexibility to the design. So intend that you you may change components. You may change a resistor here, faster there. Make sure there's some room in the, in the design to do that. Uh, the other thing is buy spare parts. You know, so if you so on ours the display is is uh, pretty fragile. So we have we have about 50 spare ones coming, and we have an easy way to replace these. Last year's they were nearly impossible to replace, even with hot air. Uh, the other thing I've learned is hardware is not hard, especially with the right tools. I did all of Bender last year with no oscilloscope, no logic analyzer, uh, which is interesting because now I don't know how I can do it without either one of those tools. So I have both of those in my workbench. Uh, production is very easy to underestimate because you think you have a stable design. Let's just go make a bunch of these. That's hard. Uh, your supply chain really needs to be managed. You have, if you go back to the fill material slide I had, you have to know every single part, where you're getting it from, when, when are they showing up. Uh, China, we actually placed orders for our MCUs probably early May, so we had plenty of time. They didn't bother to ship it. They just didn't ship it. We came back a month later and said, well, where are these? And they, they didn't even reply to our emails or anything. So it put us into a panic mode. We are you know, getting within a couple of weeks of the, uh, when we need to do our production. We had no MCUs. So we ended up placing orders to three different sellers and then getting the parts piecemeal. We ended up making the con, but you just you have to understand where everything's coming from. Uh, so design for production. So figure out 
how are you actually going to put these together? How are you going to assemble them? Uh, what's the process going to be? And then work that in your design so that you're not creating too much extra work for yourself. Uh, because if you don't, your rework and your debugging is going to take a lot of time. I can speak for that personally. We had probably a 40% failure rate on these badges. Uh, and it would be three or four hours per badge of my own time just getting it to work, whether it's a short, spy bus issue, some sort of solder. Uh, RF, again, is very hard. I'm not Michael Osmond. Uh, he makes it look easy, but it's hard. Uh, in peer review, I can't stress that enough. Like, I can look at something for days and think it's okay, ship it off, and it comes back with an error where a friend of mine could look at it for an hour. It would have been okay. It would have identified the issue. Uh, again, be meticulous about your bomb. If you figure out your cost per badge based on the bomb, you're going to fail. Your cost is much greater than that. It's usually double over times, uh, just with all the prototyping and such. That's that's a very very easy thing to miss. Uh, software matters. I didn't touch a lot on software here because that's uh, one of the things I'm, I'm better at than hardware. But start your coding early. Work on your drivers early. Um, iterate through it. Feel free to throw things away if they don't work. Uh, and the I, Arduino IDE sucks. Okay, I don't have to use it this year. I love it. I have Eclipse. I have GDD. It's great. Um, if you look at our GitHub, you'll notice that our file names are very short. Arduino puts all of your files on a tab on top, and if you overflow that, they put it in the drop down. It's a real pain if you have a file that starts with an S and you have to go three clicks down to get to it every time. That's why our file names are short. So the Arduino ID is only good for small projects, not for big things like this. Um, other things, use a schedule. Figure out you know when you need to do production, when you need parts to come in, and then make sure you track to it. And for me, it's all about learning something new. Uh, I wouldn't have done this project unless it was forcing me to, to learn soldering or learning design, learning drivers, whatever. And even this this next year, even though I kind of have a lot uh, a lot of experience in such a short amount of time, uh, I'm still learning something new. And that's really what's motivating me. That's why I spend all my free time doing this. Uh, I don't really play video games. My kids, once they go to bed, I'm in the garage coding. Uh, I do spend time with my wife. <laughs> so that's all I can. <laughs>
Yeah. Are you still baking them in the oven? No. So one of the reasons uh, you'll notice our cost went up. Uh, one, PCBs are much more expensive. Uh, we are having them fabricated for us. So part of my risk aversion last year was that's way too much money to, to drop on a project that may completely fail. Uh, this year, we're a lot more confident that people are going to want to buy it. We had the, the Kickstarter that went crazy. So we are paying for a service to do it. That's one of the, the big drivers in our, our cost. Uh, and just as a, a data point, the cost per badge has tripled this year for us. And that's after some of our, our help. It's, it's kind of the project we wanted to do last year, but we couldn't do that. Yes? Any chance we could ever see a Hypno Code badge? Uh, actually, yes, you can, because there's one right here. It's not my creation. This is uh, Glenster and was it Charles the Hat. Yeah. It's really cool. You should come check it out. Um, we thought about making like different Futurama characters. In the yes. Uh, anytime you have one. What's that? Try one view without a CPU. Yes. Or an AT Tiny 85, right? Yeah. Anytime you. If you've done this before, you'll 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 have a creature in the choir. But anytime you change the PCB design at all, you get tooling costs, and your your costs just go up exponentially. Uh, so you try to make sure the design is identical across everything. Even switching colors is is a real pain. Uh, this next year we'll probably just do one color. You may see some others like that red one or a blue one, which is our uh, the PCBs I have at, at home now waiting for me. But we'll probably just do one color to keep the cost down. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.